Nikita, thank you for sharing your story with us. We always talk about how unlocking other people's potential comes from talking about what we've been through. So please, can you give us some insight into your story, your background, and some of the trauma that's led you to this powerful position that you're in today? Um, I'll start with what happened with my children. Okay. Um, I thought my children were okay. And when they were young, I used to teach them that no one touches their privates. They don't touch anybody else's privates. And it was about three years ago, my son told me that he'd been um, sexually assaulted continuously. Continuously. For about five years. Mm. And then I found out that my other son had also been sexually abused. Um, so when that happened, I was completely devastated because mm. I, I, I never thought that, you know, you never think it's going to happen to you, you or really your family don't. or, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it did. Both of my kids, both of my sons. Was this in the home, outside of the home, somebody that they knew? Because it's always somebody who, it usually is somebody that the children know and trust. Well, it was school and home. And then for myself, um, I must have been about eight or nine. Oh, Nikita. Um, yeah, family member mm. um, I would say fiddled with myself and my sister yeah. and through that he made me sexually aware before I was actually supposed to be yeah. I'm sure you understand that, yeah. you know? so that um, caused me to be promiscuous mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Mm. That's devastating. It really is devastating. Yeah. And then that also led to making bad choices in relationships. Sure. And um, my three major relationships that I had, um, they were, I was cheated on, um, I was abused financially. Mm. Um, I was you know, emotionally abused, em financially abused, yeah. Yeah, and then being cheated on. Um, so I won't say... People don't talk often about financial abuse. Can you describe what that is? Okay, my financial abuse was um, I had my whole salary would go in at the end of the month and I would pay everything. So your whole salary would go into your partner's account and you'd be paying everything. I paid everything. And then he'd, what, control what you get or yeah, how well, you live? Everything, yeah. Yeah. Um, he would uh, lock the fridge. He would get a, he got himself a separate fridge and then he would lock the fridge. So my children couldn't get the Coke or the cheese or, you know, whatever he didn't want them to get their hands on. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, and he used to beat my kids and you know I just at that time I thought oh, you know it's this is how life is you know this is just a it's normal you don't actually think that this is an a type of abuse Absolutely. and um, you know he cheated on me I can actually tell you that I could actually fill an A4 page in columns mm. with names of telephone numbers of these girls and then you know just one day I just decided I can't take it anymore and I packed his bags and he, th he actually used to leave home and not come back and leave me with no money and mm -hmm. no food at home and children and the children yeah yeah and yeah, you know, just the one dad is I, I used to sit and cry you know please don't leave me please don't leave me thinking, you know, I won't be able to survive without him because 
I was so used to my salary being used on everything yeah. and being dependent on him to yeah. buy the food in the house or you know whatever we needed. It's an interesting thing that because quite obviously with financial um, constraints like that you had stopped realizing that actually you were the breadwinner. You brought the money home. He had just taken your mentality to a point where you thought you were relying on him. Yes. So the psychological kind of degradation of who you are as a person had led you to then feel dependent on him when actually he was dependent on you. Yeah. Actually, yes, you're right. <laughs> he was dependent on you. Yeah. And I believe it took quite a while for you to get to that day where you, where you kicked him out. Yes. Talk to me about that process and what some of the internal workings were to finally get to that point. And I know that point where it's this far and no further, buddy. Right? Yeah. 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 How did you get there? Um, it was one of the weekends where he didn't come home. And um, we had a long driveway, yeah. so my car was parked to the front and hidden away so he would come up. Because then he would, he, it was a Monday morning and he thought that I wasn't at home. Yeah. And he drove in and I was in the house busy packing his things into a garbage bag. Right, <laughs> right. Mm. But there was, you know, there was like, um, there was um, two TVs and two couches, uh, two lounge suites. And, yeah. You know, so he had... There was a double of everything in the house. So he could just so he take could just his take stuff his and stuff go. and he could go, yeah. And um, it broke my heart the day that he, he took his things and left because it was like the final the final move, you know. Yeah. Um, I actually called up on the floor in my room crying like a baby. Yeah. But I knew in my heart that I had to do that because that wasn't life. My children were, my children would actually run and hide when they hear him coming home. Yeah. And they would hide under the bed or hide under the couch or, you know. So what was their response and reaction to life without him then in the home? Um, they were much happier. Yeah. Yeah, they were much happier. Um, my, my son says to me, you know, he just doesn't know what I saw in him, mm. you know, but when you're in the relationship, everybody else sees the worst, but you see, you think you're seeing yeah. the best, you know, you, you think you're seeing his soft side. Yeah. But, you know, they're smart. They're, we need to give the children so much more credit, I think, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. They really do intuitively see what's going on sometimes before we see what's going on. Yeah. So let's bring some hope and some healing into the story. Um, so you've been out of this relationship, kind of standing on your own feet for a while now. Very long time. Okay, good. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. I wonder what you can say to somebody who's, who's sitting in that space where they're still grappling with, should I stay or should I go? Um, I can understand the, the fear because I was there myself. Yeah. And I thank God that it wasn't a physically abusive relationship. It almost was. Yeah. Um, there was an experience that happened and I said to him, I wasn't put on this earth for you or any other man to lift their hands to me. Good for you. And he didn't after that. And um, yeah, so I, I, I had never had that experience of being physically abused, but the emotional and the mental and all of that, the financial and that was there. and. You know what, it took a lot of, it took me five years. And I know there's other people that are in situations that are like 20, 30 yeah. years. Yeah. Um, but there is, there is a way out, there is hope. They just, the, the people must know that they can do it. And I know that at the t at like right now, there's a lot of people that think they can't, yeah. they've got nowhere to go, but there are people out there who do want to help and they can help if they will just allow them to help. And the Tears Foundation is one of those places, right? Yes. What do you do at Tears? I do interventions. Okay. Yes. What does that mean? Um, so a rape victim will call in and she'll say she's just been raped. And then we we'll ask her where is she? And then we'll tell her where the closest hospital to her is, um, the police station, you know, then we'll, we'll follow with her and go with her wherever she goes. We'll make sure that she's safe. We'll make sure that she gets the proper help she gets. If she doesn't, we, um, one of the ladies in the office is like our, I 
won't say it like bulldog. Okay, good. <laughs> Sometimes you need that, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we, you know, and then we'll follow up, get her counselling. But usually also I want to say that ladies who have been raped don't want counselling. And um, it's very important. And I'm not saying that counselling always heals sure. immediately, it doesn't. You know, it, it, you need you need a long period of healing. Yeah. It's not a matter of two, three sessions and oh, I'm okay. It's not okay. It takes time and yeah. they just have to be patient and keep going to their sessions with their counsellor for the healing to happen because otherwise in 20 years time, I'm going to get a call and say, I'm not coping. I never yeah. got the counselling. I'm treating my children badly. Mm. I'm abusive to my children. I'm abusive to my partner. Mm. I'm abusive to my family. That's what happens. Well, thank you for sharing. I think you've given us so much insight from your own story to the work that Tears does. It's, it's really quite empowering, so thank you. Thank you.